Hi guys and welcome to the Build Your Own Google TV Workshop. Okay? Mi gyere egy fokot csinálni Google TV? A Google TV is a hardware device that you connected by HDMI to your TV and your TV becomes like a smart TV and you can watch YouTube videos on it, play games and it's, no, it's not the Nexus View, it's almost like the Nexus View but it's called the Google TV. And they're doing as well a hardware device made by Sony uh, that you connect to the, by HDMI to the TV and they're doing a standalone TV with a chip in it uh, that serves the Google TV. Uh, we're kind of replicating this on the Raspberry Pi, okay? But for now, we, we built, I built uh, the YouTube uh, downloader, so you can uh, watch YouTube videos on the Raspberry Pi and control them with your mobile device. So before, we, we, before digging deeper into the technical stuff, I'm going to show you a small demo, okay? So first of all, I'm going to SSH into the Raspberry Pi, and the username is Pi. So by default, the Raspberry Pi has uh, this default user uh, username, which is Pi, and the password is Raspberry. 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 Twice. Yes. Okay. So we're inside the Pi. This is my home directory. Okay. I've installed the application inside Home, Node, Google TV. Okay. Now I launch the node application by executing this command and I add the AND symbol to run it in the background. Now there's a lot of ways to run uh, the node.js uh, application in the background but on the Raspberry Pi it's the fastest way. Okay. Yes, we're gonna, we're gonna talk uh, in more details about this, but no, this is just to run the demo. We're gonna talk about node, about uh, how, how the remote is working, uh, about everything. Uh, and now I'm gonna run Chromium in kiosk mode. And that's my node new. Don't worry guys, we're gonna go through this. Okay, and we have this error. This error cannot open display. Why? Because I'm executing the Chromium browser from SSH. Okay, so I need to check my environment variables and add to them display. So I click, I type uh, export display equals 0, 0.0 points to the screen. Okay? And then I execute this. And we're going to see that our beautiful TV is up and running. Now, this ugly bar is because I previously closed Chromium in a bad way, if you want. Okay? So, I uh, give it a second. And it's loading, and that's it. So, this is our famous TV. Uh, basically, I just did the watch but I'm planning to do a listen and play in the future. Weather is written or you also the, made weather? The weather, uh, no, I made the whole thing, oh. but uh, the design, I took it from the internet. I, I made this beautiful icon. Yeah. yeah, like, see this icon? That's this icon. <laughs> no? Good artist copy, great artist steal, that's it. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm gonna open the remote. Now, notice this. Uh, this is not a native web application. This is not a native web application, but it has a beautiful icon, a very nice splash screen, splash screen, right? And it's moving. Okay? And I swipe left, and it moves left. Now, I'm going to search for a movie, okay? Okay. And I'm going to click on watch. Uh, this script is called YouTube Downloader. We're going to also pass through it. It downloads the movie from YouTube and it saves it. So it's against any YouTube uh, policies, but uh, 
It's Raspberry Pi and it's an open world, guys. So. Uh, so it checks what it's in the Exactly. And now it should run it. Watch. Has the game with you? Yes. Yes. It can play up to 1080p uh, high definition movies. Uh, the movies. The movie is loading. This is the Highland Shake at Lumber Labs that I missed, apparently. If, if I want to pause the movie, I just tap and it pauses. I tap again to resume. And if I want to exit, I, I tap on the header. Now, this is like, my user experience about this, you know? I, I couldn't make like a proper remote with the buttons and stuff like that. So I said, why not using the swipe gestures and taps and stuff like that. Okay, so the demo is fine, the demo is working. Let the workshop begin. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna show you briefly the, the blueprint of the Raspberry Pi, which is a simple thing to do. Uh, there's the HDMI port, okay? Uh, USB, you have two USBs. LAN, uh, the Model B comes with uh, 512 uh, 12 megabytes of RAM, the Model A comes with 256 megabytes. Uh, you have the audio, the, the video, uh, LEDs, and the GPIO, which you can program on them uh, harder stuff. <laughs> and of course, the power and the SD card. Now, if, if you first buy your Raspberry Pi, uh, you have to go to raspberrypi.com.org. and download the... Okay, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, Linux distributions that you can uh, boot on uh, the SD card. Uh, they're all images. Uh, I'm using Raspbian because it's the most known and there's a lot of uh, buzz around it. These distros are based on Debian, okay? We all know Debian, uh, but they're the, uh, this Raspbian is special made for the Raspberry Pi with uh, a lot of softwares and programs and stuff, uh, drivers on it. Okay? Now, when you first buy your Raspberry Pi, you need uh, to uh, copy this image and ex execute a couple of codes to, uh, to make the image uh, bootable on the SD card. Okay, we're not gonna go through this today, but there's a lot of tutorials on the web. Uh, yes. Okay, hardware component done. Configurations and software used. Okay, Raspbian, we talked about Raspbian. Uh, yes, the YouTube downloader, the script, YouTube-DL. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, no, uh, YouTube downloader, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very known uh, script to download YouTube movies on Ubuntu, Debian, Linux, okay? Uh, of course, it's forbidden by Google, you cannot download YouTube videos, you have to stream them. Yes, uh, exactly, so you have to update it. When they change, the guys change it. <laughs> okay? Uh, gonna, it's very simple how to, to download a YouTube movie using that. I'm gonna go to YouTube, that's a movie. Downloading video. And it's downloading. Now I'm going to stop it because we have limited quota. Okay. Yes. It's messy. I'm X player. And the movie started. Hello. Uh, I'm X player provides a set of shortcuts to. I can 
Start and play. Okay, I know it's a very nice song. We can't watch it. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. And now I'm going to explain to you a bit about the architecture used in this project and why. Okay. Uh, as you can see, it's it's all JavaScript. Okay. JavaScript on the front end, JavaScript on the back end. Right. That's why I had to use Node.js. Now, who knows about Node.js? Tao, guys. Tell us a bit about Node.js. <laughs> and and why, why did I use it in this project? I told you why. Yeah, you told me why. <laughs> All right, okay, so you're going to clap on this. So, my name is Kjell Jordan. So I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. Okay. So Node.js basically is so Chrome actually runs something called V8. It's a JavaScript engine. It's the engine that understands and interprets JavaScript. So there's this crazy guy who, like four years ago took this V8 and put it on the server. And now all of a sudden you can from your terminal you can start joining interpreting JavaScript. The beauty about it is that you have the powerful V8 engine doing this. Okay. So for as if you forget about this, as programmers, what's interesting about this is that previously, I mean, not previously, even if you don't use Node and you want to build a web application, you're going to be using um, any kind of other language, regardless, depending on your taste, right? It can be Python, it can be PHP, it can be Ruby, whatever. And every language, every language, even in Java, every language has a framework on top of it that is like for web. Okay, so. Ruby has Rails, PHP has a lot of them, Code Python, Web Cake, Python has Django, Flask, that's okay. Node is not language, and Node is not a framework. Node is just Node. Okay. <laughs> and it's actually a JavaScript interpreter, that's what it is. Okay, so you can't compare Node to others. However, that being said, Node has a couple of frameworks out there um, and the, that are a little interesting. But the interesting part of using Node is that you are using JavaScript. If you forget about performance, because I don't know today, how can we really prove it's more performant than others? And it does have a limitation, because Node is single threaded, so, which is good for I.O., bad for CPU intensive tasks, right? Um, so, the, now, when Derek was describing to me how he did the app, what's really interesting is that there is. You can't suck it. Yeah, of course. Okay. Suck it, that's So, there's something called Suck it, Any of you has already done, have you done like, web work before? And do you know about Ajax? Yes. Okay, so if you don't know, just simply put Ajax is basically if I'm on a browser and I wanna let's say change what's happening over here without loading the page, but I wanna fetch content from somewhere, it can be my server or the server. So I make an Ajax request. So Ajax is nice, but it's kind of annoying when you write it. It's special things to make it But what what's happening is this thing called socket but I what really happens is that it creates sockets. So now if you're on the client, uh, you connect to a socket on the other server and it doesn't block, it just emits events. It's basically event driven. Okay, and the thing about socket.io especially is that it's purely in JavaScript. So it's like it natively works in Node. Uh, and web and web sockets in general, they don't natively work in any other language. There's libraries and frameworks around them. So what Derek is doing over here is that he wants to be able to control from his his controller, which is the phone, he wants to want to control the browser or Raspberry Pi. Okay, and, and it, so it has to be live, it has to be actually events happening. Swipe, that's an event. So on, 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 on my Pi, I want to understand that's an event and make something about it. Okay, so he could have done it in Ajax, but he's doing it using Socket because um, so the access is syntax, and it's actually much more simpler and it's like integrated and native and, and, and the, the, the ecosystem he's using. So Socket is one strong point, and the other strong point is that. He just used JavaScript and no, so yeah, but Pi. On, on the socket thing, uh, do you remember writing a code, an Ajax code, natively, uh, not natively, but the, the, without using jQuery? It, it's a long process. You have to you have to satisfy a lot of browsers like Internet Explorer and stuff like that. So jQuery, they did Ajax, which is a simple tool to access Ajax and get and post. Now, Socket.io did the same thing for WebSockets. And not only for WebSockets, for real-time applications. 
Like so, uh, socket.io supports even IE6, which has no web sockets in it. But it, yeah, so uh, it falls into uh, another uh, know, technology like Flash or XHR polling, long polling, stuff like that. They could actually use Ajax. And they use Ajax as well. Yeah. But, yeah, socket.io. It uh, deprecates to Ajax. Yeah, it deprecates to Ajax. Yeah, it deprecates to Ajax. Exactly. Yeah, so that's it. Okay, so uh, I mean, Sakura was the strong point. The other strong point is that she's, she's redoing uh, JavaScript in every single place. Yeah. Right. Um, um, and the third point is, is uh, yes, spawn. So and, uh, I guess actually even another interesting and funny thing about what's ha what happened with Node is that out of a sudden you can actually build shell scripts using JavaScript. Um, if you ever need to call something on your terminal, um, if, um, Oh, the function. Function. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so basically what's, what there's this, this uh, function mm -hmm. called spawn. Spawn. Yeah, spawn. child process. Uh, the yeah, module is spawn. Uh, so uh, you, you have your app, you're just a program only. Right? It spawns another program that runs and you're in it. And you can start piping results from one app to another. No of piping. So um, yeah. that's what's cool about it. Yeah. So that's it. This is why I'm using Node. No, that's basically it. Uh, of course, on the front end, I use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And I use CSS3 and HTML5, CSS3 on the mobile device to uh, do the, the transfer, CSS transforms stuff. Which one? On the app. OK. Uh -huh. uh, one last thing. Now we're moving into a, a totally different section, which is the, the front end of the application. Uh, while doing this project, I discovered I discovered GitHub for Mac. No. <laughs> okay. By the way, this project is open source. You can fork me on GitHub and have your own version of the Raspberry Pi TV. So. Before going deeper in the, in the app structure, I'm going to tell you a bit about the, the tricks that I discovered uh, while doing the native the web, web mobile app. Okay? You know, there's native apps and mobile web apps. And there's phone gap, which is hybrid. So uh, I have... Where's my... Okay. Yeah. Okay. As you can see here, the icon uh, of the app. So, yes. Uh, can you open the app, please? Okay. There's a splash screen, and 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 it, it looks like a, a native app, right? There's no browser. Why? Because of this. When I, I went to the Apple uh, Safari uh, documentation and I read the following. If you add the meta tag in your HTML, app mobile web app title, remote, when you uh, go to Safari, go to this link, you can uh, click on uh, add to home screen, right? And this name will come by default. The image, the icon, will come, will replace the default icon. By, by saying grad equal Apple touch icon. And the startup image, which is the splash image, is Apple touch startup image. So these meta tags and links uh, are provided by Apple. So we're kind of uh, noticing their, uh, what they want to do in the future. You know, they have, they're jumping into web technologies and JavaScript to make native applications. Uh, that's, that's my idea about uh, mobile development. And recently, uh, Firefox uh, Mobile OS, yeah. if, if you read about yeah. it. it. It's all about developing uh, those native uh, mobile applications uh, using web technology. It's, it's, it's actually a full fledged operating system built yes. on the chain of thought. Exactly. Do you think you would be Chrome OS? Yes, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the same house, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's it. I'm using the, the logo as SVG. My bad, no. <laughs> okay, now let's go back to Node. Now back to the core of the application. As you can see, the structure is very simple. Uh, I have a public directory. In it, there's uh, the HTML, JavaScript, images, fonts, CSS, all those things. And my server is only this code. It's app.js. Okay? Now, when you're developing a node, you have something called npm. Okay? npm is a, is a pool of modules and libraries built with node, built on node. So let's say, Anna, I want uh, OMX player. That's what I did, and, I, and it's shocking that it worked. I was looking for a way to control our Max player without writing the whole core. So I found this. Okay? How can I use it? I go to my dependencies file. No, not this one. That's the node module. Yeah. Package.json. Uh, here you can uh, specify uh, a lot of variables, the name of your application and whatever. Uh, dependencies, that's what's important. I'm using Express, I will talk about it. Jade, no, I'm not using Jade. Oh, so I'm going to move to GitHub, the code is on GitHub. Yeah. <laughs> what's better? Okay, so Express, Jade, I'm not using Jade, Socket.io, I'm actually controller, simply. So, why, why do we do this? Uh, on Node, you, you, you write down your dependencies in one file, and you go to your terminal, uh, to your Node directory, which is this one here. Okay, and uh, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to be crazy, I'm going to delete my project. Okay, I'm gonna tell it sudo. And what? I deleted the node modules. Now the application is not working anymore. So I go ahead and, and write down npm install. And what happens is it reads the dependency, dependency file and downloads all the dependencies. And the dependencies of the dependencies. So you don't do anything. You can deploy your application on a server, on a development, uh, uh, for your developer plan, you know, anywhere, and you just execute it. Excuse me? Uh, APT get is for Ubuntu and Debian, you know, to, to download stuff. So IPM is similar. It's the same concept, but applied to the web. Exactly. But so, tell you, these dependencies are different than the dependencies that you're thinking about. These dependencies are for Node. I'm so using npm instead of apt-get. But so, no, it's the same concept. And that's what's nice about Node. <coughs> okay, so after uh, downloading the dependencies, you will get a, a folder called Node Modules. Okay? And to use these modules, you have to require them. So. I'm going to say var express, require express. Uh, app equal express creates the express server. But it doesn't, but I need to, to, to require HTTP, which is uh, uh, by default there, and create server and wrap it with app. So inside, inside the create server, there is your express server. Hello, um, if, I want, if I don't want to use express, which saves a lot of time. Uh, I can uh, predefine my, my server to, to, uh, to serve the content that I want. Okay? But here I'm using Express for these reasons. A path, IO is socket.io, and socket.io listens to the server and to the client. So you need socket.io on your server side, and you need socket.io on your front end. Uh, Spawn is also, like Rob said, uh, a native module in Node. You do not need to uh, download it. OMX player is to control the OMX player on the Raspberry Pi. Now, uh, every uh, Express uh, 
a server needs a, a little bit of uh, configuration, uh, specifying the ports and stuff like that. Uh, notice one, I'm using process.environment.testport. Okay? Now, if I go back into this and I type in and it states all the environments. Now, if I add testport, export testport equals 8080, 8080, no. and testport 8080. No, no, no. Okay, uh, this way, whenever I deploy my app, it is away from the I could keep. So uh, if, if on my, my, my staging server, I'm using the port 8080, but on my, uh, on my lead server, I'm using the, the default port 80, right? So uh, I can do this with, uh, by specifying this in the process environment. And I can, can access this via node by doing this, process.amp.devaluable. Yeah, and if I console.log now, process.amp.display on the Raspberry Pi, it will show 0.0. Body reports, not here, okay. I don't use ONX, this is uh, for the ONX player. Okay, let's say I want to pause the movie. If, if, I, if I'm using Express, I can say that express.useOMX, it will create for me these three uh, requ uh, requests uh, that I can do. Pause, quit, and start. Now the routes, uh, usually what you can do on Node, you need a boilerplate to start, right? You don't want to write the boring code again, again, and again. So what Express does, which is uh, the node server, first of all, you should install it like that. npm install express and provide the minus g parameter. Minus g will install it globally. So now if I want to create a new project, a node app, uh, okay, test express, active studio. I hate my password. And, and type, okay, I'm going to go into test. To be test. Express. Okay, and look at the magic of Express. Okay, it created for me a boilerplate. And now I can write down npm install. Now it's installing the express server again. Then I can do, okay, now let's stay with no, add there. Port 3000. So I go into my browser, 3000, and that's it. I have a, a basic Hello World Apache server done in, what, one minute? So, so I can go into the, the, the node server and show you what's happening in there, the basic configuration. Uh, well, this is nano, this is ugly. But uh, as you can see, app.get slash, this is this. App.get route slash users will take you to another page. This is how we route. Uh, stuff on uh, Node and using Express. So, going back to the codes on uh, GitHub. So what am I doing here? Uh, Apple Get will will simply uh, read what's in inside public index.html and uh, Apple Get slash remote will get the remote. On the Raspberry Pi, when I'm using Chromium, I'm, I'm doing this, right? Chromium and kiosk mode, right? 
and I'm opening local host 8080 and it's opening the, the app which is a simple HTML page the web and on the, on the mobile I'm doing the thing, same thing I'm going to do it again in Safari so I go to Safari, I open the URL 192.168. Blah blah blah. Depends on your uh, on the IP that the router gave you. Uh, on port 8080 slash remote. When I do slash remote, it will, it will open me the remote controller. And I simply click on add to home screen, and I click add to home screen, and it will come in a decent way as our remote controller. Okay. Hala. Once we connect the screen, and once we connect the remote, I'm doing console.log to see what's happening. It's right here. Okay, before talking about this, we should, I should tell you a bit about how uh, to do a chat server on socket.io. Uh, is anyone lost? Or... Uh, oh, guys, can you keep up with this? I know it's... Uh, I know I'm blah blah blah, <laughs> blah blah, blah blah blah. Do you have any questions? Don't hesitate. To ask. Do not hesitate. Uh, like you, you can right now go ahead and do this express thing and have your uh, first note JS uh, hello world thing. You know, it's not hard. <coughs> Okay. Socket.io. As I mentioned before, you need Socket.io on the back end and on the front end. So on the back end, uh, you do the following. Uh, you wait on the on connection event, right? This means that once uh, a front end is connected, once a client is connected to the server, it will pass through this code, okay? Now, uh, Socket.io depends on emitting events and receiving events, okay? So inside the app, inside public, index.html, this is this page. I'll scroll down. Okay, first of all, I need to include this. Socket.io slash socket.io.js. This will include the socket.io uh, script inside my page. JQuery, Moustache, I'm using Moustache as a template engine. Uh, you don't need to know about it. Oh, wait. Hangout. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, when can you? Yeah. This is the index.html page. Now, I need to say that var socket equal io.connect and I should enter the, the IP and the port of the Raspberry Pi, of the application, the node application. This will connect the client to uh, the client socket to the web socket, to the server socket. On connect, which is the first event that socket.io emits, uh, I'm emitting screen, right? Now, if we go back, to app.js, I'm waiting for this event to be triggered like this, on screen. The client is emitting screen, and the server is waiting if someone emits screen. So I catch it, and I say, uh, this is a screen. So socket.type, uh, doing socket.type is adding a variable to the socket object. So I add the type, which is screen. And I'm doing the same thing for the remote. If you go on the remote, the remote is a different HTML file. So it's emitting a different uh, event called remote. And the type here will be remote. And, it's, and I'm logging to the server screen ready, remote ready. Exactly. Yeah. Now, uh, the actions. Now the control actions follow the same pattern. Yeah, the killer is a good point. Uh, imagine that I'm chatting with you, and there's a server serving these chats and broadcasting to, to, to all the clients. 
This is socket.io. So you need to think this way in order to create a real-time application. Yeah. Oh, okay, yes, I will go through this now. Now, uh, I'm using a very cool script called QJS. Okay, QJS uh, provides you with, uh, with the swipe and tap gestures and all that. With a simple JavaScript. So you, you just add this ja yeah? You just include it in the page and you can say keep on the in jQuery uh, uh, this zip dot on click. You can do the same here. On toggle Exactly. Dot swipe left, dot swipe right, do it down. So once this event it's it's uh, once I'm doing this event, I'm emitting I'm emitting uh, uh, using the socket data. I'm emitting data and I'm emitting an event for the server. The event name is controlling. The event name is, we go down, control. Okay? And I'm doing this, now let me show you the app. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Yeah. So, uh, our container is my div, and when I'm swiping left on this, do we have it here? Okay. Yeah. And then when I'm swiping left, So when I'm swiping left, I'm catching this event and I'm em emitting exactly to the server. And when the server, like when you see it, I mean, after that, I'm going to be able to hide the server. Who will be able to the screen? But by the time I be able to the screen, I'm I'm executing a jQuery function, which is moving this uh, CSS, uh, like removing this class from here, adding it to the next one. Control. Yeah. Uh, now I'm going to move and talk a bit about the videos. Yeah. I'm sorry? Of course you can do it with Ajax. But. Okay. Uh, you won't get this real time feeling if you're, if, if you're doing it via Ajax and you're always looping. Uh, waiting for callbacks from the server. Yani you don't, you won't get this push state. Okay. Now I'm pushing the data to the server, and he's pushing back. So as I'm talking about the stream, I'm talking about the stream. So when the action happens, exactly. Uh, Ajax. Yani like like when it's summarized by the way, Ajax. When when I wanted to pause and play the video, to talk about it on NPM. What I put now, I have an X layer. The OMX layer module. Uh, provide us uh, with the following uh, request uh, links. When, when, I, when, I, when I do a, a post request or a get request on this, you know, if you have to click add or whatever, Exactly. I click here. Okay. Uh, now moving to the video thing. Okay. This is remote. Okay. So uh, here, I'm using the YouTube API. Let me find it. Yes. Okay. So, uh, via YouTube, get video. Uh, the URL is using the, the open public API of, of YouTube. Okay, it's JSONP. I'm using the get JSON. 
URL, function data. So I, I send a request to the YouTube server and it replies by a JSON file. I catch it and I process it, I take whatever I want and then I show it on the mobile screen like that. So, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So when I type Lamba Labs, it shows me Lamba Labs videos. When I type, let's say, Google Maps, and if, if, you, if you notice there's no submit button, that's because I'm using uh, the jQuery on, on change event. Google Maps, 8 bit. Google Maps, 8 bit. What's happening here? Exactly. So, uh, Anna, I'm sending the electronic format. I'm sending the ID. I provide services of a wide range of devices, from desktop computers to mobile devices, including tablets. Okay. Now, if I want to pause it, when I tap, I'm going to see it. How, how, how did I do this? Hold Tap, 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 tap. Yeah, hey. Uh, add body dot tap. Okay. When I click, when I do, when I catch this event, what I'm doing is doing a get request on this, which is provided by the OMAX control. If I if I tap on the other, it exits. That's so, good. Then what? Our header, the header header. Okay. When I tap, you notice I have one dollar, dollar, two dollars, one dollar. This is to differentiate between jQuery and uh, QoS. And this is QoS. This is jQuery. Okay. I'm doing uh, socket dot image control tap. Uh, actually, I'm not using this. Yeah, I'm not catching this. But حتى إذا هيك مو عارف ليه. App dot body dot fade toggle. Fade toggle. Uh, يعني if it's uh, shown, it hides, and vice versa. So, big boss one, tick, tick, tick. Okay, it's a bug. <laughs> yeah. And this, this is the moustache template. Uh, I like moustache as a template engine, because it's very light. يعني uh, when, super hot. When I get data on YouTube, keep on the on the page, but then I have a server HTML equals and see it hot in the elements by Albo and append it in the end. I create a JSON object, which is Hydra, ID title thumbnail duration, and then below template equal what video template.html and HTML is what I'm doing, mustache.html, and render the HTML. Uh, the JSON to the HTML template, when I can append it to the uh, to the UL videos. I put it on my blog that uh, you can find here. No, not here. Here. Hala, Bado, Machi, the default uh, WordPress uh, template. But I'm going to redesign it and write the first uh, my first article on it, which is how to build your uh, your own Raspberry Pi TV. Uh, and uh, if someone is excited about this project, uh, it's on GitHub. Uh, you go to GitHub, Donald Derek, Google TV, fork it, uh, download it, use it. It's open. And uh, as well, I added uh, the Raspberry Pi cheat sheet. Every time I'm, uh, I'm doing something on the Raspberry Pi, I'm putting it here um, so I can keep track of what I did. So let's say if I want to install Node, uh, instead of uh, compiling Node.js on the Raspberry Pi, there is a pre-compiled uh, uh, file on the internet that somebody shared. So you, you wget this file, uh, unzip it, untile it, and it's installed. Node.js is working. You just need to put the, the variables in your profile, and that's it. 
Yes. Like, uh, compiling Node.js on, on uh, the Raspberry Pi, it took me like five hours when I did it. Yes. And uh, that's basically it. I'm going to continue this project. Uh, the, the lesson for those who missed uh, the NIMP. Let's see if it's working now. So I'm going to be also using the, the SoundCloud API on the box to listen to music via another project that I did for fun. But it's not loading now because the server is down, I think. No, it's not. SoundCloud was down. Yes, and for the last thing, play. I have a very cool idea here. Uh, I want to play retro games on the Raspberry Pi, and I want to control them with my mobile. So the same, the same controller, if you flip it like that, you'll get a joystick and start playing those retro games, Mario and stuff like that. Uh, that's slow, I'm sorry. So that's basically it. Thank you for attending the workshop. As you